Ready? I'm ready. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hey team, Chef Eric here from Kamada Joe. I want to reiterate to you one more time, simple things done perfectly win every time. Here's a super easy triple cream brie brat that you can do. So if you're thinking about doing hot dog, but you're looking for something different, you can bring your sweet Italian sausage, your hot Italian sausage, your bratwurst. We're actually going to poach ours in beer today. All right. And the reason I want to poach this in beer is if we put this uh, bratwurst on a 600 degree grill. I'm worried about busting that casing before the center is actually cooked. So we're gonna cook it gently in the beer and then we're gonna flip it over and get some char on the outside. We're gonna melt this beautiful triple cream uh, brie right here on the cast iron and we're gonna brighten up our apple, cook some bacon lard on and uh, chop some chives. So with no further ado, let's get this recipe started. Today we're using the Kamada Joe Big Joe 3. I'm sitting at about 525 degrees and I've got my grill grates at the very top of the divide and conquer system. Now, thinking of what's gonna take the longest amount of time, it's gonna be our beer poached brats. So we start with our brats or again, sweet Italian, hot Italian. You could even do it with hot dogs, but you want the beer to come up just about halfway Notice I've got the charcoal bank to the side. Let these hang out here and come to temperature. Uh, the thing that's gonna take the second longest amount of time is gonna be our bacon. So we're gonna make bacon lardons. Now watch how I, how I cut this. I'm just gonna cut it into little linear pieces. And we're gonna pop these in the cast iron and just let them render out and become crunchy. Uh, you know, we want some sort of textural contrast. So between our apples and our bacon lardons, uh, this is gonna bring a nice salty, smoky punch and also some crunch. Spread it on out, right onto the grill. Now that we've got our brats poaching in beer, uh, our bacon rendering in the cast iron here, again, about 550 degrees, we're gonna jump on a little apple prep. I always used to like in the restaurants trying to get the entire peel in one big piece. You peel your apple however you like. Can he do it? <laughs> Just pro moves. Just a little positive pressure. You can hear they're still working on the deck, the Kamado Joe deck back there. Boom, look at that. I'll be able to sleep well tonight knowing that uh, this worked out. Good stuff. Okay, we're gonna core this apple merely by cutting around the core. And the deer love these. All right. And then we're looking for somewhere in between a small and medium dice. You know, these, don't, these just don't need to be exact cuts. And we're gonna do something interesting. I can hear the bacon start to crisp up behind us. And you hear me talk about professional chefs in their kitchen. Sometimes they don't like to play music because they have to hear everything going on. Um, I always played music in the kitchen, uh, except during service, but I can hear what's happening right now and it sounds like magic. And don't be afraid to get involved with the process. Start to see some bubbles happening over here. We're taking our time. And 550 is a good temperature for this. I've done this recipe before at 700, and I, I just all I did was rush myself. So this is this is nice. All right, let's come on back over. Let's finish these apples. I want to show you a little trick on how to how to brighten this brat. So again, we're going. Larger than Brunoise. Little, little rough cut over here. And we're gonna season this apple with a little salt and pepper. Always fresh cracked pepper. Go into a small bowl and just wake it up with just a little apple cider vinegar. 
Next, let's go ahead, since I'm, I'm about 25% of the way there on the bacon, uh, we're starting to get some simmer action going on with our beer brats. Let's get into the triple cream brie, which might be, if it weren't for the brat, would be the star of the show. Uh, I want this to be real melty. I want it to be one of those sexy things where people are around, I'm pouring the cheese over the top, people are going nuts. Uh, this is a fun one, okay? So we're just gonna start by cutting the top off of this beautiful local brie. And we're gonna put it on this little cast iron piece here. So come on over, let's sneak this. Oh, good simmer action going there. Boom. And we're not trying to get too much color. I like it. In order to get this brie nice and soft and to instill some of that natural lump charcoal flavor, not necessarily smoke, but just that grilled flavor, we're gonna go ahead and close this lid for a minute. and just stabilize again at that 550. If I leave the lid open, we lose air control and the temperatures just start skyrocketing. Again, I don't want to burn those bacon lardons and I want to instill a little bit more natural lump charcoal flavor in that brie. Uh, let's go ahead and start the final preparation. That's going to be chopped chives. And these just grow out in the garden here in North Carolina. So really, really fortunate. Just bring them on into the kitchen, give them a little wash. And if you think about the colors of everything that we've got going on right now, it's very sea of same, okay? It's your blondes, it's your light browns. Um, this chive is not only gonna bring a nice oniony appeal, uh, light, not as, not as bitey as say a red onion, but it's gonna be a nice little onion flavor. It's also gonna make it pop with that green and that's gonna be at the very end, very top. Take a peek at what's going on under the dome. And you can see how the casing's starting to pull back just a little bit. It's still got, I don't know, another 30 degrees to go. But once we're 90% of the way done here, we're gonna pop them onto the grill grates and give them a little color, a little char, and just a little bit more flavor. Notice how I'm pulling, notice how I'm pulling this bacon out of the grease and then popping it back in. This is called the swimming method. Is it? See when you're frying. It is now. <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when you're deep frying and you're doing like a gofret potato chip and you want you want a really crispy potato chip, you fry and then you take it out. You fry and you take it out and it's a great way of keeping a blonder color uh, but getting that crisp texture. So now we're applying it to a grill that's on a slight hill but I love this pool of bacon grease that I'm able just to Knock that bacon in, let everybody get activated. Everybody's talking, everybody's getting involved, and then say, hey, let's let's chill out a little bit. And then the magic happens up here, okay? So yes, Nathan, it is the, sw <laughs> it is the swimming method today. And will be for here on out. Ah. I'm gonna take a little bit of this bacon grease and drizzle it inside the, uh, the bun here, and then we're gonna grill our, grill our buns. And just a little goes a long way. Nothing crazy. Oh, getting soft there. Uh, take a look at our bacon lardons. We're done. We can go ahead and Pull those off. Mm. Again, you could do it. You could do it like this if you wanted to. And then pull it back. Swimming method, I tell you. Usually, I'd have a paper towel under there, but paper towels are in uh, high demand these days. So, spread those out. And now we've got garnish. One, two, and three. I'm gonna go ahead, I love in the Big Joe threes and the classic threes how we now have metal shelves. 
So I'm going to pull these brats off and let them post, poach in the residual uh, heat of that liquid. We're going to pull these beautiful buns. I'm very happy with, with the char on those. And I want to close the top. I'm getting a little sexy wobble there. I'm going to push this off the direct heat. I'm going to close the draft door and put the dome down. Uh, we're going to go in with a little stone ground mustard on the bottom of the bun where the brat's going to sit right on top of that. That's going to be a little sneak attack for us. So they're going to bite in and see everything and then boom, that, that uh, acidity and those big bold flavors of the stone ground mustard is going to wake us up. I'm going to take the brats and go right across the grate, getting their 90% of the way cooked. Let's just get a little char on that casing. Look at that cheese just doing, doing work, just doing work. It's just a little color to do, you know, we don't, we're not going crazy. And let that cheese come off for just a second. Just stunning. Sort of scrape the bottom, make sure it's all getting nice and melty. You know, you could even reduce this beer a little bit and get make it a beer cheese if you need it a little thinner. It's just cooking. Do it. Do what you like. You know. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Getting a little aggressive over there on the brats. That's what I'm talking about. Notice how the casings are busted. We cooked it gently enough in the beer that we still have our emulsification in the sausage. You know how juicy a sausage is isn't just dependent on the grind, it's dependent on how fast you cook it as well. If you break that emulsification of the progressive grind, when you grind the meat and the fat together, you cook it too much, it's gonna separate and it's not gonna taste as moist. Uh, we've done a good job of cooking this very slowly and gently in the beer and then putting a blistering sear on the outside. This is best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and bring the bratwurst. Cheese looks nice and frothy. Okay, we're gonna start on this on this very first one here. Are we ready? And then move to the second. You know, there's a German, a German saying that I absolutely love. More is more. So, now for the garnish. We'll start with the bacon. Next, the punched up apples. And finally finish with the chives. That is fun. It's so simple, it's big results and it's just gooey, right? It's cheese, it's, it's everything you want with the bacon and the apple. All right, let's give it a go. Absolutely stunning. Oh, that's a healthy bite. That's so good. The cheese is out of control. So uh, I got one of the apples too, and it's just so nice to have that bit of acid on there with the sweetness to kind of cut the fat content of the cheese and the broth and the bacon. Good addition. Uh, folks, this is a lot of fun and again, super easy. That's one of the things I love about grilling and doing dogs or brats or sweet Italian, hot Italian, any type of sausage. Uh, if you can think of any way that you would improve upon this, go ahead and leave us a note in the comment section down below. I'd absolutely love to read your thoughts on what you would do differently for a topping on this wonderful, wonderful brat. Uh, folks, if you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed cooking it today, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, give us the like, uh, click the notification button, and subscribe. And folks, I'm Chef Eric and Kamada Joe. Cheers to you. Happy grilling.